You know what it's like to sit in the dark and watch something alien. To wrap yourself in the night and the emptiness around you. And indulge in media that takes you further from the reality you know. To have a secret. A discovery of that which should not be known. And yet, you found it. I believe you do know what that's like. You're here with me in the Night Mind office. Welcome back, even if you think this is your first time visiting. Tonight, I wish to introduce you to a pocket of YouTube that has consistently opened a door to the mental and emotional space between early night and dawn. It comes from Japan, labeled under a single letter, Q. After discovering the footage in its catalog, I knew this, above all else, was how I needed to start the year. A found footage archive, so simple in its appearance and presentation, but startlingly effective, enchanting, and potent in procuring the conditions for that delightfully alien atmosphere we all search for late in the night. Before we get into it, however, I must warn you, some of these entries are quite audio-heavy, emphasizing a need to listen. In order to assist us with our experience, our friends at Raycon are here to sponsor the dive. Whether you enjoy listening through a pair of everyday earbuds, low-latency headphones, or a speaker with a battery to last you through a whole night of dark journeys, Raycon has you covered, with rich audio starting at half the price of other premium audio brands. I've been utilizing Raycon's everyday earbuds for years, throughout all seasons. Shoveling snow in the winter, exploring the re-emergence of the world during spring, exercising during summer, and conducting my all-important October work during autumn. The deep bass is perfect for my kind of music, because I need it to be loud and strong, and work instantly. I've said it before and I'll say it again. No wireless device has ever paired with my phone as quickly and easily as everyday earbuds. And because the carrying case is also the charging device, it's always been my most convenient sound solution. Pair that with its noise isolation mode and ease of pausing just by tapping the side of an earbud, and you've got a soundtrack you can immerse yourself in and stop whenever you need to. Ready to buy something small with a big impact? Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash nightmind to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. There's a whole array of solutions waiting for you in a variety of color options. Again, just click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash nightmind to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring tonight's journey and the offer for Nightmind viewers. Now, please make sure you're settled. If you're like me and have been looking for something akin to our usual material out of Japan, you're going to enjoy this. It's very clear that the official title of this series of media horrors is just Q. But out of the unfortunate need to separate itself from any forms of confusion regarding its title and presentation, the channel name is Fake Documentary Q on YouTube. All videos are uploaded with English subtitles, and the catalog has been building since August 21st, 2021. Q can best be described as a found media horror anthology from Japan. All the uploads are contained stories, and I say found media instead of found footage because it truly ranges from analog horror to digital media tales. As of this time, 16 episodes have been uploaded, and yes, there is a constantly updated official playlist, which I will also have in the video description, so you can sit down and just let the entire experience run in a marathon. Date night idea for Nightmind viewers? I heavily endorse it. Due to the nature of this project, I'm taking a different approach at this point than I normally would. As always, I advise you to go watch it all yourself before continuing with my video, but not because I'm going to dissect it all. No, not this time. This isn't for me to tear open from beginning to end and point out the guts on. This is for you to engage with, on your own, as much as you're able to. Some of the subject matter may make you wish there was a trigger warning, though having watched all of it so far, the only one I consider worth a warning is Plan C, which is audio-based, but does concern the topic of prematurely ending one's incarnation in the flesh. So, if that subject doesn't sit well in your stomach, simply skip over it. All the rest, though? Delicious Japanese horror sensibilities as you know them, with wonderful surprises and formatting. And as for the rest of this video... Well, for those of you who haven't gone off already to enjoy this discovery and send some love to our fellow scare aficionados in Japan, I'm going to spend some time convincing you with a few uploads, and lavishing them with praise, because, come on, you know me by now. The collection begins with the entry, Cursed Video. 
Is there a more classic modern story we acquaint with J-horror than the evil videotape? I don't think so. From the start, we're told, what you are about to see is an archive footage from a certain TV production company. A cameraman and director discuss their approach for going on a filming venture. It's explained that they both work for a TV program in which crews investigate viewer requests. This time, the show was challenged to confirm the details of a rumor posted on an internet forum. Has anybody rented at this a video that's supposed to kill you when you watch it? The name of the store is given, but censored. The video in question wasn't given. The last entry on the forum was in 2009, and no other information had come up since then. Could the video still be found? Upon showing up to the location, the crew found the store was in the process of closing permanently. They did manage to find the old VHS section, but nothing was coming across as the right material. Asking around seemed to be the only course of action. The employee at the cashier desk didn't know anything, but assumed the manager would. Everything we witness is from the covert camera view, and the feeling of walking around like this touches on all the right senses of browsing a crowded video store, mixed with the isolating feelings of a building in the process of emptying out. The duo returned to the store later to speak to the manager, with a cameraman lagging behind to secretly record while the director secures their position. The manager agrees to let them film and to investigate the remaining VHS tapes in the store for the allegedly killer video. This is the one, the manager later says, and we're given a close-up with details by the narrator. It was a really old horror film. Written by hand, it says it will kill you if you watch it. The manager asks the director if he wants to play the tape. Will it kill us? He asks. The manager almost laughs, saying, only one way to find out. So what do they do? <laughs> well, they don't leave us in suspense, that's for sure. The director and manager inquire about what they're seeing and come to a consensus that they must be funeral photographs. These pictures keep coming back, interrupting the regular flow of the film. Once it returns, the manager notes that he wrote this down on his recommended list in the store because of the sequence they're watching, but doesn't elaborate his reasons. He explains that the rumor began when junior high kids began renting it. He didn't understand the appeal of this one obscure title until that started, and asked about why it had become popular. One of the kids told him it kills those who watch it. There was only one photograph of a deceased person at first, he says. But then, it grew to four. Someone found it funny to keep adding these photographs, he theorizes. As for the writing on the box, the manager himself put it there due to the popularity of the legend. Enough people began stopping in to ask about it, so, being a businessman, he labeled it accordingly. As for it killing people, the manager jokes that everyone who watches it is going to die eventually, from something, just like everybody else. With that mystery solved, the investigators get back into the car. In the end, it was like a little prank, the director said, but it could be interesting. As for the broadcast, it never occurred. In fact, a new twist came in the story, it wasn't a documentary effort at all. It was a mockumentary. Except, a few days before the broadcast, the director was in an accident. He died from a skull fracture. In addition, the cameraman also died from heart failure. He was only in his 30s. The producer decided to shelve the episode. What follows, as explained by the narrator, is extra footage of the director buying the tape. It was later found in company storage, along with the footage of its purchase. If this had all been a mockumentary, why go to the lengths to hide this? Wouldn't the tape have been a production of the company itself for the mockumentary? The narrator introduces the contents of the tape, which was Supernatural Experience, Episode 1, Grudge of a Doll, and claims to be dramatizing a true story. It goes through the section with the inserted photographs, showing four. The narrator repeats that the production company insisted this was a mockumentary. The episode ends with conversation between the director and cameraman. The store manager said there are four photographs, but I only counted three, the cameraman says. The director double checks with him on his claim as they drive, and the cameraman repeats that he only counted three. I see, says the director, trailing off. And there it ends, like all episodes of the Q anthology do, leaving you in a place that's just a bit cold and questioning. There are quite a few other uploads, all of them their own journeys, and I don't like the idea of spoiling any of them, especially my favorites, and the stuff that feels like things we've covered that you're going to be happily surprised by. Because yes, there is internet horror and an episode with elements of the recent subgenre of analog horror. But let me give you one more taste. 
Flower Offering is episode 9 and has a similar setup to the first. There's a TV show centered around ordinary people, taking its cues from there. The interviewer and cameraman are at a mall, asking people on the street about any complaints in their current life situation. They mention very common things. Not having gone on any trips lately, gaining weight, something in the house not working like it should, wanting more money. And then one man says, Someone places flowers in front of my room, by the front door. I have no idea who's doing it. That sticks out, doesn't it? A strange ritual of flower offerings to someone who doesn't know the giver. The TV crew decides to follow this man's problem for their episode lead. Mr. S, the individual, is living in an apartment in the downtown area while away from his family on some extended business. He shows the door, and a handwritten sign is very visible telling the visitor with flowers to stop leaving them. He will call the police. He's been in the apartment for three months, and every week, once a week, he's found the flowers. The last offering is still in the apartment. He hands them to the interviewer, who immediately remarks, the kind you offer at a grave. Mr. S demonstrates how the flowers are positioned when he finds them, and after pondering the strangeness of the situation, the interviewer and cameraman begin discussing lines of inquiry. They could go to the local flower shops and ask if there are any repeat customers buying flowers like these, but before deciding upon that, the interviewer realizes there's something odd about the wrapping used to hold the flowers together at the base. Under the plastic and the elastic bands, there are papers, long wrapped papers, as she takes them off, we begin to realize they're coiled up strips. A closer examination reveals they're from a photo. Someone has shredded a photo and used the strips to wrap the flowers. Mr. S is stunned and joins the effort to piece the photo together. They have a photo of what appears to be a family, with one member's face rubbed away. How many bunches of flowers has Mr. S received and thrown away with photos like this hidden inside? The TV crew decides to buy Mr. S a camera set up for just outside the apartment. Two weeks later, they're reviewing footage and watch a clip of a resident from the upper floor holding some bags clearly stop and examine the setup before moving on. The apartment complex was sent a copy of the photo in the last flower offering. They claim not to know the identity of anybody in it either. With no other footage worthy of note, no leads and no repeated flower drop-offs, the crew decides to end their investigation and go to inform Mr. S. They tell him they've received no leads and believe the camera setup has sufficiently scared off the flower giver. He's thankful for their help and appreciates that he can keep the camera on behalf of the production company. They say goodbye and miss the form of someone or something lurking in the back room. Out on the street, they stop to turn around and wave at Mr. S. And again, they fail to catch a visitor inside the apartment that Mr. S doesn't perceive either. The team reports that since then, no flower had been placed at the front door. But shortly after, Mr. S left the apartment. And that is just two uploads. I didn't even share the best ones. <laughs> some of the uploads are clearly more involved in their creation, and some are, very simply, someone with a camera going out and doing things that were free or cheap and producing great results. Q is more than a late night trip down haunted halls. It is a brilliant reminder that so much of the strength of online horror creation is that you don't need anything more than a camera, a video program, an idea, and careful execution to produce great results. It doesn't even matter if it's just your smartphone. I could find an actor, a setting, establish a date and time, and go direct them on an experience they record with their smartphone right now and make something. You don't need a big budget or expensive equipment. You just need to think and use initiative. And often, when you do that, you create an experience that resonates with people and sticks with them more than some pieces that had a $2,000 price tag involved or more. For quite a while now, all I've wanted to see come into my leads is something this simple. A person, a camera, a scenario that is scary or becomes scary, and an aura of reality that leads us into a corner of the world seldom explored, but deliciously frightful and wonderfully alien. Brass tags found footage internet horror goodness. Q is bringing that in spades and is continuing to upload. Set aside some time for yourself. Plan a meal, a date night, a you night, whatever. Bring up fake documentary Q on YouTube, go to the playlist, hit play all, and enjoy the journey. If you've been missing the wonder of scenarios and creative experiences like these, you will get them back. This is what we've been missing. And for those looking for inspiration, 
open up and take notes, because you're going to feel energized before you're done with the playlist. I certainly did. That's all for tonight, everyone. Sometimes we dive in deep and examine everything in front of us, and sometimes the best thing I can do for you is show you the entrance to a journey. This is one of those nights, and I do hope you'll come back here to leave a comment on your experience with the Q Anthology. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Thanks to everyone involved in the making of Q episodes. Thanks to all of you for watching, and thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, who have waited patiently while I looked around for the content to start the year off right. If you'd like to support Nightmind, you can do so for as little as just $2 a month, which gets your name in the credits of all major videos and allows you into the Patreon community with our Discord. This also supports the Nightmind Index for new and emerging unfiction projects. And if you can't do Patreon, you might have noticed the new thanks button below my videos. You can donate a personal thanks to me directly this way, and your comment will show up with a special tag. So, if you enjoy what I do, or particularly enjoy this episode and want to say thanks that way, you can do so. I greatly appreciate it. Finally, I've done the thing a lot of you have asked me to do for a while. I've begun streaming on Twitch. Recently, I've covered the analog horror special Winter of 83 Live, and we've picked up our playthrough of Vampire of the Masquerade Bloodlines from last spring. Follow me over there at Nick underscore Nocturne for notifications and such, because I don't have a schedule yet, so we're going by mood until I am more settled. It'll be a lot of fun to have you with us. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon. Enjoy your time with the Q playlist. Remember to subscribe to them for more in the future, and sleep tight.